Good afternoon, Crusaders. Welcome back to another episode of Updates from Monroe Woodbury Middle School. Hey, happy Friday, Crusaders. Welcome back for another edition of Updates from Monroe Woodbury Middle School. It's me, Mr. Masana, behind the mask again, heading upstairs into a back corner of the building just to give you a look as to what kinds of amazing hard work are going on right now in the building. And in this case, we're gonna highlight your amazing guidance counselors. Let's take a look at what they're doing. Well, as I edit this video, our guidance counselors are still hard at work figuring out the sections and balancing the class loads to make sure that we all have a safe and open opportunity to get all of our classes in during the school day, whether that is virtually or in person in a socially distanced way in the hybrid model. Thank you, counselors. Let's take a look at what's new this week at Monterey Woodbury Middle School. Okay, Crusaders, let's get into the updates. Update number one, cohorts. There are four cohorts district-wide, your A, B, C, and D cohorts. Those four cohorts have nothing to do with your house placement, so there's no connection there. I've received a couple questions about uh, if I'm, you know, do if I'm in greenhouse, will I get moved because I'm in a certain cohort? Absolutely not. All four cohorts are present in all four houses, and it's a way to distribute and space out the amount of students that we have in each one of our houses throughout the school day. If you are an A or B cohort student. That will mean that you are a hybrid student, which means that starting September 22nd, you'll be coming in the building one day a week. After two weeks go by of hybrid learning, our first two weeks of hybrid, students will be coming in two days a week uh, for the hybrid model. If you are a C, C cohort student, C cohort students are remote only. So the remote only students are all put into one cohort together and we are doing our best to consolidate sections and redistribute numbers in order to get C cohort students as many remote only sections of classes as possible. Uh, last but not least, our D cohort students. This is uh, our smallest cohort. It's exclusively our 1212 special education students and our newcomer ENL program students, which will be coming into school uh, for four days out of the five day school week, Tuesday through Friday. Okay, two additional notes about cohorts. First, uh, we've asked families to make a decision about uh, what they're doing, the remote learning model versus the hybrid learning model uh, for the semester, which ends at the end of January 2021, at which point we can reevaluate. However, we really needed you all to make a commitment for the semester in order to balance our classes and make sure that everybody's appropriately spaced out while in the building. So I appreciate it. I know this was a difficult decision and um, I thank you all for your questions and, and conversations back and forth, especially over email and, and through the YouTube comments to make sure everybody was comfortable with this, the decision they had to make. Uh, thank you for that. Secondly, there are some classes where a remote only section is incredibly difficult to create uh, because of the amount of students involved in that situation. So there are a couple of things that could be happening. One, you might be cross housed for a class. So you might be uh, in a class as a greenhouse student with red house students for that remote only section. There's also a possibility where you will be virtually included into a section that is an A or B cohort section, which means that you would virtually join into the class that's occurring in a hybrid fashion. So those are possibilities for classes. If we can't make remote only sections work for every single class, which would be extraordinarily difficult to do, but we're doing our best to offer as many uh, sections as possible of remote only classes. Okay, update number two, virtual orientation. So last week I alluded to the possibility of doing an in-person tour or something to that effect before school started. Unfortunately, we've, we've gone back and forth about this. It's simply just not possible uh, given the logistics of the situation to get students into the building at this time. We still have markers that have to go up and signage and all these things that are going to be put into place to keep people safe that we just haven't been able to do yet. So we're looking forward to being able to complete that over the course of the next week, create some videos and put that together as a virtual orientation, which will be released on Friday, 
of next week to give everybody an idea, whether you're an incoming sixth grader or an experienced eighth grader, uh, about uh, what this building is going to look like and how it's going to function throughout the day when you are here, as well as what it's going to look like for our remote learners. So uh, the virtual orientation will be released on Friday. Um, it might be on the district calendar that you're looking at for Tuesday. I just want to make everybody aware it will be virtual, it will be Friday. And also on Friday, we're looking forward to being able to send out the schedules so students will know what house they're in, what their schedule looks like, and they'll be given the virtual orientation all on Friday in lieu of a regular updates video from Montgomery Prairie Middle School. Thank you. Okay, final update. Grades. So grading last year was different. And, and the reason for that is that so many of our families and students didn't have access to devices that would enable them to access their education on a regular and consistent basis. So this year, uh, and credit is, is due to Dr. Vias and the entire technology team over at the MCC who has provided over 5,800 Chromebook devices for families throughout our district, which will enable all of our students to have access to the education and to the learning opportunities that are being presented through Google Classroom, et cetera. So that being in place, we now have the ability to go to more of a traditional model of grading because uh, you know the assignments are being posted by the teachers and the students are receiving them, submitting them, and getting uh, feedback and grades as a, as a result. So we, we do anticipate that grading will be very much like it was pre-pandemic uh, in, a, in a lot of ways and in other ways it's going to have to change. Assessment's going to be a little bit different this year and um, point values may be a little bit different for different assignments this year but on the whole students can anticipate receiving grades consistently and uh, having things like honor roll and GPA and report cards be published uh, like a you know almost normal way pre-COVID pre pandemic. That's it for this week's updates. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us once again. Updates from Monroe Woodbury Middle School. We so appreciate your comments and we appreciate the email questions because the more clear, consistent information we can provide to you, the better. And we know that um, that's our, our job in helping to support, to support our community. So uh, keep it up, uh, keep the questions coming. And if we can be of any assistance, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. As always, we are happy to help. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Stay safe, folks, and we can't wait to see you next time. Okay, update number two.